If I told you it's possible to get a game rated 10 of 10 on Steam and 95% on Humble Bundle for $10, would you believe me? And would you play it? What makes it fun? Well, failure makes it fun. But it's not that it's failure, it's that you're going to fail at some point, especially in the endless mode, because it's just hard and it gets harder and it gets harder, but you get to level up and become stronger each time that you do a run. So at some point in time, you'll beat everything except for endless mode, but it, it continues to build and you get better and you get stronger. There's persistence throughout the game, but it's also about the journey. So yes, there's the end state, but there's the journey and it happens time and again, and you know that you get better and you can quantify that you're getting better because there's a scoreboard. One of the big questions I always have is how epic can I get my ship during this one run? Can I make it a carrier? Can I make it a railgun machine? Can I make it a missile boat? What can I do this time to make my ship as epic as humanly possible? And then of course, how much can I actually replay this? Cause it looks like I just do the same thing time and again, but there's so many unlocks and so many different branches and trees to go down that no two gameplays are going to be exactly alike. But I promise you this game can be played time and again, and it hasn't gotten boring for me yet. Because of all the random procedural generation, no two games will ever play the same. Additionally, the available upgrades are generally just partial selection of all available assets, but rerolls are available every run and very useful so that you can change kind of midway through a run. Different bosses require some different strategies. But let's talk about the game itself. Oh my goodness, the graphics. The game is set in this dark void of space with some bright splotches of nebulas and planets, and it's a beautiful backdrop to the bright top-down view of a colorful ship, weapons, and the enemies. Nova Drift colors complement one another. They're never really jarring and they always provide feedback of what's going on. The health, shields, and hull are all at the bottom of the screen. They don't take up too much room, but a quick glance tells you exactly what's going on with your ship. And the enemy boss's hull is at the top of the screen, letting you know just how much more you have to go. Simply put, the game is mesmerizing and enchanting, provides the perfect balance visual stimulus for the five to 15 minutes of most runs. And that's complemented by the sounds. The music in Nova Drift is beautiful and matches the pacing of the game. It's often helped put me into like this Zen flow as we fought through dozens of these enemy ships. I mean, just everywhere. And normally I don't buy OSTs, but I'm really leaning towards it this time. Honestly, this is awesome music composed by these guys. While generic, they're all well tailored to their purpose. Different size explosions, different sounds for different weapons and effects. Nova Drift is a well curated stew of sounds. Okay, but that tells you nothing about the gameplay. So let's dive into that. So the Nova Drift developers say that players controlling an endlessly evolving biomechanical ship that allows for theory crafting and just continued exploration throughout everything that can happen. It's a ton of choices. And you know what? I have to agree. So the actual controls are really simple. If you're playing keyboard and mouse, for the mouse, it's just move the mouse where you want to point, left click to go forward, right click for shooting. There's a few keyboard controls as you get more skills, but it's all left hand controlled and it's very easy. Using the keyboard is pretty similar. You use the ASD keys, you use the arrow keys, and then you use the Q through T keys for some special abilities. Once again, don't really have to move your hands too much. Most PC gamers are going to be very comfortable with it. And then gamepad, very simple, very intuitive. The only gripe that I have is that I can't rebind the mouse clicks because I want to have the go button be the right mouse button and the shoot button be the left because I'm primarily a first person shooter. Now getting into the upgrades and man, there's a ton of upgrades. There's additional unlocks, unlock game modes, modifiers. It just continues to make the game change and evolve and allow the ship to become stronger and stronger every single run. Now, when you actually go through the game and you do the upgrades in the game, most upgrades will actually cost the ship in another category. So you might be faster, but the hull is weaker. You might be, or you might be stronger in the hull, but then the ship is slower. You can absorb more hits and crash, or your shield is stronger, but it takes longer to recharge, etc., etc. Theory crafting. And this is where the game really gets into a lot of its depth. And this is because players can go through and design totally different builds every single time. Do you want to be a carrier? Do you want to be the rail gun? Do you want to be a burning ball of flame that no other ships can get near. It's all available through this game and it's a ton of fun to try each different run because not every game will be played the same way. You get three options for your shield, for your hull, and for your gun every single time. You can re-roll and hopefully get something different, but for this run, 
I might have wanted missiles, but I got a flat cannon or I got the Protoss little thing. It's a ton of fun. But really, those rerolls come and it really brings that diversity every single run. So I know that I've made it through a couple bosses and the next one's really just going to be hard. So I kind of want to reroll. And this allows me to change up the game a little bit and, and feel a little bit better about what I'm doing. And the unlocks are by leveling up the players and the ships and just being able to get more of the modifications all the time, making the game harder or easier and kind of moving forward. This is really what's going to add a lot more additional replayability because there's a ton of different game modifiers to unlock instead of just items for the ship. So it might be endless. It might have modifications. It might be randomized. It's all fantastic because it just makes the game easier and harder for the player to go through. And then achievements, because everybody loves achievements, right? Everybody loves having an achievement to go through and say, I did this epic thing. And while yes, Nova Drift has achievements. Oh wait, these are actually really cool achievements because instead of being like, oh, you completed the game. It's you made an epic hit of over 300,000 hit points on one target at one time. Something that's really hard to do. These aren't like the, oh, you beat level one, you beat level two, you beat level three. No, these are actual achievements of doing something pretty epic within the game. Be honest, the best achievement though is the top 10 scoreboard. I love this. I love the fact that they brought back like the old school arcade. I have a top 10, you put in your initials so you can compete with somebody that's here locally with you. You know what? Absolutely. I'm going to compete with anybody that wants to come in and play on my machine and they want to try and put their initials up on my top 10 board, go for it. But you know who's always going to be on top? This guy. So really, is this game worth $10? Absolutely. I think this game is the easiest $10 I would ever spend on Steam. I got this game for free to review and put out some social media content. So I felt like, you know what? This wouldn't really be honest if I didn't buy the game. So I'm going to buy a copy for my wife, put it on her machine. Mrs. Ritter is going to have this so that she can have a little Zen out when she's working and then try and compete with my scores. Everybody knows I'm going to actually, she, she'll probably beat me within the first week, knowing her. And really, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't point this out. Yes, this game could be for everybody. And it just depends on how people feel with having their kids with violence. This is very cartoonish explosions. It's not blood. It's not gore, but there's there's big explosions and there's a lot of shooting. So if it's something that you're comfortable having your kids do, it's an object shooting another object, then sure, there's no gore or anything. But if you're not really into that type of violence or your kid doesn't really like shooting, then I'd probably hold off until they're a little bit older. Anyway, I know this one's kind of quick, but this is Wes from Ritter Gaming. I really enjoy and endorse Nova Drift. This is going to be a game that stays installed for a long, long time on my machines. If you have any questions hit me up down in the comments below if you have a zen out game i'd love to know what your zen out game is because nova drift is my new one it replaces what what was it bejeweled for the longest time or in peggle but this game is so much better so much easier and so much harder at the same time that it's now taking that spot anyway west from ritter gaming do good play hard game one and i'll see you next time